Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I want to talk about variables in DAX. Now, you must have seen videos and blog posts where, you know, a lot of bloggers declare variables while they write DAX coding or DAX formulas. And if you've never really understood how these variables are declared or what do they mean and how do they work, this is the video that you would want to watch. Now, I'll try to make the video as simple and as clear as possible. And hopefully by the end of the video, you will be able to understand how variables are declared, how do they work and things like that. Let's just get started. All right. So first thing is that what exactly is a variable? So variables are like values or calculations that you declare with the name in your Power BI DAX calculations. And then you can just calculate them once and you can reuse those variables again and again to build up your calculation furthermore. Why don't we actually take a look at the syntax of the variable and then you will hopefully understand it better. So I'm just going to open up the field list here in my sales table. I'll create a new measure and in the measure, I'll start declaring the variables. The first thing that I'd like to speak about is the syntax or the way that you write the variables that you have to follow while declaring variables. So the first thing that I do is I create a measure and I can just write any measure name. And after I write the measure name, I have to write an equals to sign and then I start declaring the variables. So let's just say that the variable that I'd like to declare is let's say random. So the first thing that I have to do is write the keyword VAR uh, to initiate declaring the variable. Now, as soon as you write the, the keyword var, it actually gives you a list of formulas that start with the word var, but you don't have to go ahead and pick up any of these formulas. You just have to actually go ahead and write the keyword var. So you write the keyword var, hit a space, and then you declare the name of the variable. What would you like to call the variable? And if Power BI finds that your name is not valid, it will probably give you an underline here. But if there is no red underline here, the name is absolutely valid. So let's just say that the variable that I declare is random one. That's the name of the variable that I declare. Now to calculate the value of the variable, I can put an equals to sign. Now I can write a formula that calculates the value that is going to be assigned to the variable, or I can just input a particular value. So let's just say that I input one value called 10. Now it's always good to declare variables in separate rows, although you can again start to write var and declare the second variable, but I'd like to do it in different rows just for the formatting purposes. So I declare the second variable, I write var once again, and this time I declare another variable called random two. And this time I'm just going to maybe write the value 20. Now you can see that I have written the measure name equals to the var keyword, the name of the variable equals to sign and the formula or the value that I'd like to assign to the variable. I've done that twice and that's about it. And now I'd like to close the loop of the variable. So now that I have declared two variables, it's also essential for you to close the loop loop of the variables that you have opened. So we have opened two variables and the way that you close the two variables is by writing the return keyword. And as soon as you write the return keyword, it will close the loop for both the variables. You don't have to write return two times. You just have to write return only once. Once you do that, the interesting part is that now you are free to either use the variables or not use the variables. Here is what I mean. Now you can see that I can maybe return the calculation and I can start using those variables and I get those variables in the suggestions here. So I'll say random one and I can say that, hey, I'd like to do a random two, add these two values. I can do that or I'm absolutely free not to use these variables as well. So I can just maybe after I write the return statement, I'm allowed to do completely different calculation, which is not concerning the variables at all. So I can maybe just write ABC here and return a text value. Both are fine. Now this, there is a benefit for doing this and we will take a look at the benefits a little later. But for now, you have to understand that once you declare the variables, you're not mandated to use the variables after you write the return statement. Anyways, so I'm just going to maybe write a random one and then plus random two. And then this is my variable and I can just maybe drag that measure to my calculation. And this actually shows me a value of 30, 10 plus 20 is equal to 30. And maybe I can just convert that to a card. All right. All right. The other thing that you have to understand is that I can also declare variables inside variables. I can also nest variables if I want to do that. So I'll open up the measure once again and let's just uh, nest the variable. So this time I'm actually going to uh, nest another variable. So you can see that we have actually declared a random two here and in random two, I will start to create more variables. So I will write var. The indentation is just done for the formatting purposes. You may want to do it. You may not want to do it, but I'll highly recommend that you format the 
variables otherwise it just becomes very hard for you to read the DAX anyways so I'll just maybe declare let's say another variable I'll call this variable as one declare the value as one maybe I'll declare another variable and declare the value as two and call this as two now because I have opened two variables I actually have to close the loop and say return and maybe I'll just return one plus two all right now this one plus two is going to be assigned to random two and now your total should actually be 13 because one plus two is three and then you have a 10 and now your calculation becomes 13 so you can actually also nest variables inside variables in case you want to build up a sophisticated calculation or right, the other important thing to understand is the scope of the variable so you would only be able to use the variable only if it's declared and not before that so if you take a look at row number seven until row number seven I have already declared random variable one and I'd be able to use it if I want to use it inside of random two so if I can just wrap this around the bracket and multiply this with random one I should be able to kind of use random one inside of random two because random one has already been declared but I actually cannot do that at row number two because while I'm at row number two I have yet not declared random two as a variable. So it actually goes and refers to the rows above it. And if the variable has been declared, you can actually use it. If the variable has not been declared, you cannot use it. The other important thing to understand is that random one, random two, and all these variables that we have created are only local to this particular calculation that we are creating inside of the measure. You cannot use that outside of the measure. The other important thing to understand is that the variables are actually available to you inside of the loop. So you can see that we started this loop inside of uh, random two, which is where we declared two variables, one and two, and then we close the loop. Now, if I'm trying to make use of the variable one and two outside of the loop, I would not be able to use it because I've already closed the loop with the return statement. So if I go here at the end of it and I start to write one here, I would not be able to use it because this loop we have already closed. All right, now that you've understood the syntax and the basic workings of the variable, let's just try to figure out that where all in Power BI can you declare a variable. So you already understand that in Power BI, we can create a measure, we can create a column of a particular table, and we can create the entire table using DAX. In all the three parts, in a measure, in a column, and in a table, you can actually declare a variable. Let's just take a look at examples of all three. How do you create a variable, a meaningful variable in a measure? How do you actually create a variable in a column of a table? and how do you actually create a variable inside of a table when you're trying to create a table or right, let's just take a look at a more meaningful calculation a measure that I have created and how do variables work inside of that so I made this measure called total sales USD which is where I have declared two variables to begin with using the var keyword and the first variable is dollar factor which is where I declare how much is my dollar conversion factor in terms of Ruby 75 and the total sales value which is another variable and I'm doing the calculation of that particular variable using a DAX formula and then I use the return keyword to close the loop of those two variables and then use the those two variables inside of the divide function to kind of return a calculation next up is how do you actually declare a variable in a column of a table so here is where I'm trying to do a calculation of a discount column let's just take a look at the variables that I have created so I first of all write the name of the column just as the way that I wrote the name of the measure I write the name of the column I write an equals to sign the same syntax var keyword name of the variable and then the formula or the hard-coded value that you would like to declare so in this case I I am just trying to build a variable and I'm trying to check that if the order date which is this particular date is that date a Sunday or not so I convert that date into a three letter abbreviated weekday and then I check that if that three letter keyword is that a Sunday or not and if that is a Sunday this variable actually will give me a value true if not it will give me a value false I declare another variable called discount which is a 10% discount and then I wrap both these variables inside of my if statement if check Sunday this is actually going to give you a true or a false so if this check Sunday is giving you a true then you do the calculation take the amount multiply that with a discount if not this calculation is not done because you can actually leave the last part of the if blank inside of the tax all right, so the final place where you can declare a variable is while creating a full table using DAX in Power BI. So you already know that in the table tools, you have the option to make a new table that you can make it using the DAX formula language. And this is where I've actually declared a few variables. So I made a table called calendar. The first variable that I declared in the calendar table was a cal table. I 
have done that with the formula it's the same syntax here name of the table the var keyword and the the variable name then i declare another variable which is where i'm restricting my calendar to only have dates uh, beyond 2002 not before 2002 and then i return that filtered table as my output so that is where that's how you can actually declare a variable in a measure in a column of a table and while creating the full table in bar bi all right now i'm going to speak about a common error that a lot of people make while they declare variables so either you're declaring a variable in a table in a column or in a measure people sort of make this mistake so take a look so here in this calendar table we have declared a few variables and then after the return statement I have written filter table now since I am creating a table this filter table which is coming after the return statement should give me a table this should not actually give me a scalar value so if I just cancel this filter table and instead of that write one and I commit to that formula it's going to give me an error because one it's a single value it's not a table and power bi says that hey you started creating a table but right now you're just returning one one is not a table it is going to give you an error so what you can do is you can actually write the full table here called filter table commit to that press enter this actually gives you the full table so remember when you're trying to create a table and you're trying to use variables after the return statement whatever variable you're writing that should actually give you a table if you're trying to create a table in power bi the second thing that you have to understand is that if I actually go to my sales table and if I go to my discount column in this column this should not give you a table this time this should actually give you a scalar value because in every single cell you cannot really fit inside a table you can actually fit inside a single value so after my return statement whatever calculation or variable that I create this should actually give me a single value if I try to kind of create a table here it's actually going to give me an error so take a look I declared another variable here and I call this as dummy table this was not there earlier I just did it and I made a small dummy table here by including three numbers in a curly bracket this actually means a table if I cancel this entire formula and just close that and if I kind of write dummy table here this is a table and a table cannot fit inside a single cell here this is actually going to give me an error because there are multiple values and I cannot have multiple values inside of a single cell so ensure these errors are not made and uh, whatever you are creating either a table or a column or a measure for column and for a measure ensure that your variables are returning you a single value and for a table ensure that your table is returning you a full table all right, now let's just take a look at how do variables work when you declare them in your calculations? How do they behave? So to show you that, I've actually created a small calculation here. This is called max sales v2. And the first thing that I'm doing is creating a small table here. I'm using the values function. If you don't know the values function, please take a look at another video of mine and you'll be able to understand the values function. But to explain you simply, all that I'm trying to do is grab this column of the sales table, the product key. The product key is going to be duplicated because you could have sold the product multiple times. The values function will remove the duplicates and you will have a unique product key column. That's what it will do. So once I have this particular table, which just has one column after duplicates are gone, I'm trying to use the max x function and I'm saying, hey, why don't you go in every single row of the product one by one by one. And then against every single product, you calculate the total sales and then just find the max of that right and if I drag this measure to my visual here I actually get 16,000 this is actually the sales of the best selling product so these are product keys and since I'm just using the max x I get the sales of the best selling product let's just tweak the calculation and see if we still get that answer or not so what I'm going to do is play around with this a little bit and maybe declare another variable so I'll call this as sales value and maybe I'll say that I'd like to declare total sales so I'm declaring a variable total sales value and I'm just declaring the same measure to this and instead of using the measure directly I'll maybe use the variable here so sales value now essentially I've done the same thing all that I'm doing is declaring the variable here and then calling the variable inside of the formula if you're expecting this should actually give you the same result but it will not give you the same result let's just take a look at that so the result is actually 391 and the reason why the results change is because variables are actually calculated once let me help you understand so here when you declare the variable outside of the max x function the variable actually calculated the sales right now what you're trying to do is when you go in every single row of the unique products key table this sales value will not be calculated once again it will just use the same value that is calculated outside of the max x function 
keep writing the same value in every single row against the product and then it will just pick up the max value of that and give you this particular answer. So the one very very important thing to understand is that once you declare the variable, the variable gets fixed and that same calculation is going to be done over and over again if you start using that variable inside of Power BI. Now you must be wondering if that is the case, how am I going to use this? How is this helpful? So I'll show you how is this helpful. So what I can do is this is actually fixing the total sales value. What I can actually do is I can actually have total sales divided by my total sales value. This is the entire sales. This is the sales of the best selling product. And if I now commit to that, you would now be able to understand that 16,000 divided by 391,000 is how much percent the maximum selling product has contributed to the entire sale. So this is a creative way in which you can use this behavior of declaring variables to drive more calculations. All right, my final word on variables, I will highly, highly recommend that you start using variables inside your DAX formulas. They will essentially provide you three big, big benefits if you start using variables. Benefit number one is that because the variable is calculated only once and then you can reuse that calculation inside of your measure, your calculations actually speed up drastically. That's a possibility that you can actually see and your calculations will be optimized for speed. The second thing is that if you're trying to create a very, very long calculation which has multiple parts, you can actually break that calculations in variables and start using that variables inside of your calculations. Not only it will be easier for you to manage the calculation and understand the calculation, but the third benefit that you will get is also you'll be able to debug the calculations because now, because you have declared variables, you can actually debug parts of the calculation very easily. So if I would like to debug only this particular calculation, I can actually rewrite that after my return statement and I can actually call that calculation and only debug that calculation and proceed with my output. All right, so three things to close this video. Thing number one is that if you'd like to learn DAX in a very structured way, uh, wherein somebody explain you the basics first and then brings you up to a level where you start building sophisticated business calculations with your own data, I highly recommend that you check out my course and you would benefit a lot from that. Thing number two is that I often send emails to my subscribers and I write a lot about DAX and Power BI and Power Query sort of that stuff on my blog and I highly recommend that you join my email list which is where you will be notified about the things that I'm working on, the things that I'm writing, the blogs that I'm writing, things like that. And the final thing is if you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in the comments. I'll be very happy to help you out. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.